How's it going guys? It's your boy UV and welcome back to another video. Today I'm actually doing something a little different than I usually do on my channel. Today I'm going to be creating a program that actually edits my pictures for me. Let's get into it. So basically the goal in this product is to take a JPEG and apply a bunch of filters to it and then output a new JPEG. So I know you can already go online and edit pictures however you want, change brightness, contrast, things like that. But I wanna automate that process by being able to just give the location of a folder with a bunch of images, give this text file that has what I want to do in terms of brightness, contrast, saturation, things like that, run my code and have all those pictures in that folder, have those filters applied to them. You run the code now we get a 97,000 lined file and now just to break down what this is this gives us the dimensions and the max rgb value and right here these are all rgb values of each pixel so if you look at this actual image and we were to look at let's say the top left like the very 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 first pixel in the screen that pixel right there corresponds to these three values that's the red in the pixel the green and the blue so now we have the information to actually apply filters look at this people say coding isn't a sport Okay, so I think I figured brightness out. I have one of the pictures that I'm using, and basically if I increase the brightness, we see how that picture kind of changes. Now, I don't know how much this brightness will change. I just multiplied every pixel by two, so hopefully it works. This is the original image. We just need the new picture that we output to be brighter than this. So let's give it a shot. And it takes a while for these pictures to load just because these are massive files it has loaded. This is the moment of truth. I really hope it got somewhat brighter. Okay. That is not good. That's definitely not what I was going for. Yoga. Okay, so we're trying this again. I think it works this time. Let's find out. We're gonna compile our program, let's run it. Okay, we have a new picture. Let's see if it changed. Let's go. That's good, that is, that's really good. That looks pretty much like this. The one that I have is a lot brighter, so it gives me a lot to work with. I know how to brighten an image, and how to darken an image. I know how to change brightness. This is a good thing. Now we can make some progress in the other departments. Six and a half hours later. Okay, so I found this formula online and basically the formula kind of shows how contrast works. And I wrote it up. I put the contrast number as 20. No clue what that means, but we're gonna give it a shot. We'll run the code. There's no errors. It'll take some time to compile, but let's see if it actually contrasts our image or not. Again, here's the original. Now we're going to compare the contrast the image. It worked! That's how it should look. That's almost identical to that. But do negative numbers work for this? I don't know. Let's put it to negative 67. The image should be super gray now. That's literally perfect. Okay, so we can we can do basic basic editing now. <laughs> Okay, so I'm at this point with the saturation where I kind of had to make my own formula to do it because I couldn't find anything online. So I'm trying something. I don't know if it's gonna work. I've been using this site to kind of look at different colors, but I've been trying to modify these colors around to see what would work for saturation. And it gets kind of difficult to do. We're gonna go up 70 just to see how it works or doesn't work. Oh my days. I deep fried the picture. That's definitely not how it should look. Not gonna lie, this one's kinda tough. Okay. 
Okay, so I've been trying to figure out saturation for the past day and a half. For some reason, I'm struggling with it. I'm getting extremely close. When you look at this, that picture versus this picture, this is a lot more saturated in this area, these tones. But it's here that there's a problem. Why is it turning yellow? The formula worked for every color except for that for some reason. And I don't understand it. Gone with the exact same code like five times. It doesn't make sense. If it works for every single color and pixel, how would it not work for one? Coming up with how to do this stuff is fun, but sitting there trying to figure out why it doesn't work is very annoying. Especially when you've reread the same block of code like eight times. I'm gonna give this a go for another like 20 minutes. If I can't find the saturation problem in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna move on to the next thing. A few moments later. I figured it out. For those of you that want to know what the problem was, I'll explain it right now. If you don't care about the problem, you can fast forward the video like 10 seconds. But basically what happened is I was dividing zero by zero at some point because the various calculations and the variables ended up with me having to divide zero by zero. However, when you divide zero by zero, you get this thing, it says like dash NEN. So it doesn't really register an error, which is the problem. Instead of registering an error, it turned the entire variable, which was was like zero over zero plus a number into just NEN. But when that value was outputted to the PPM, it was stored as zero. That was a problem because instead of having a value of like 228, 230, 100, any value, it was just zero. So that brought one color extremely down and the other two color values were then obviously more predominant. I'm gonna run the code just to show you guys how the saturation looks because I really like the output of the saturation. So when I run it and I'll open up the old picture again, obviously, that's our original. I've only saturated it a bit because I don't want to see the extreme colors. When I'm using it as a filter, I only do it to bring out a bit of a, a little bit of color in the picture. So I saturated the image 9%. And this is how it looks. It's saturated, but it's not super noticeable, which is perfect. When you look at these two images, this left one seems so much duller than the right one it's perfect like that that in itself is one edit i would make and i would i would be done editing that picture saturation is completely done okay so i'm finally done the project and now i'm just gonna go over how it works so you notice that in the projects folder i have three different folders one for filter picks one for pictures and one for presets pictures is where you put all the pictures that you want to edit filter picks is where those pictures will be outputted after they've been filtered and presets is all the different presets that you can use i have this thing here called convolution kernels and i'm going to go over what this is really quickly so basically image convolution is where i take a kernel which is basically a matrix. And I use a specific algorithm to apply it to the pixels, which helps me get a different filter. So for example, this would be an identity matrix, an identity kernel, which wouldn't change the input picture at all. But if I were to use a matrix that looked like this, I could do some edge detection and it gets pretty cool. You know, blur images, sharpen images, things like that. This convolution kernels text file just has a couple of different matrices. Now the way that presets work, there are an unlimited number of presets that you can make. So if I wanna make one like DSAT, all I would do is I would go over the brightness, how much I wanna scale it by, what I wanna change the contrast by, you know, a positive or negative value. If I wanna saturate an image, if I wanna desaturate, and then all the information about the kernel. So I'll just quickly demo a couple of these to show you guys how it works. So when you actually run the code, you get a prompt that says enter the name of the preset file. So if I wanna desaturate a picture, I just type in dsat.txt. And since I do have four pictures that are pretty big in size, it takes a while for the pictures to get filtered. If you notice in the actual terminal here, as soon as an image is done filtering, it will display a message that whatever the name of the image is has been filtered. And up here in our output folder, we can see that the image has been filtered. So we're just gonna wait real quick till all these images get filtered and I'll show you guys the results. Right, so we see here that all four images have been filtered. And when I open up the actual output folder, we get four different input pictures, but now they've all been desaturated the way we kind of want them to be. So that's how, you know, the filter in the program essentially works. Now, just to sort of not have to run through each filter I've made several times, I've already gone ahead and applied every single preset I've made to all these pictures to show you guys the results. So this is desaturation, the one I just showed you guys. Now we have edge detection, which is one of the cooler ones where it takes our normal picture and it goes over all the lines and kind of amplifies and bolds those lines in white and darkens everything else in the image. It requires pictures to have a lot of uh, definition and focus in it 
in this picture you notice that you know the focus it comes around like my face but you have to zoom in a bit so if we actually zoom in to this filter we see how you know my face is outlined here my body's outlined so that's just kind of what the edge detection filter does and that was done through the kernels but just to give you guys an example of other different edits you could do this one adds a bit of grain and saturation so if i just compare this now to the original if i zoom in we see how much more noise and grain there is as well and this is all done through the program so all of these are just grainier versions and more saturated versions of the original picture and now just to show you guys kind of the extent to what you could take this program i just increased the saturation as much as i possibly could to see how the images turned out so this is just a lot of saturation and contrast and it gives us kind of weird deep fried effect it kind of looks cool for this picture it kind of looks like a i don't know it gives me like a video game type vibe but yeah, you could pretty much do whatever you want within the bounds of, you know, saturation, desaturation, contrast, and brightness. And then you can use whatever kernel you want. So that's essentially how the program works. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I'm obviously not done with it. There's a lot of things that I still want to add and still want to do. And I'll keep on working on those. But for now, I think, you know, I've gotten a very, very good start. And the program is looking pretty good. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the video. Let me know if you guys want to watch more coding videos because this was fun to do and I would love to make more if it's something that you guys are interested in watching. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next video.